Crowd of reporters, just a single photo in a tweet. The White House took a more low-key approach to sharing the news of the president's new version of the travel ban. Nine News reporter Toronto Thomas is covering this story. There are five key differences differences between this plan and the previous plan. Yes, there absolutely are. Starting with a number of countries included in this temporary travel halt, there were seven and now there are six. Iraq is no longer included in the list of majority Muslim countries from which travel is halted. Officials say that's because the Iraqi government is helping the U.S. with increased vetting of its citizens. The other four differences, the travel ban is not going into effect immediately. Even though the order does bar all refugees for 120 days, it does not say single out Syrian refugees with an indefinite ban like the previous executive order did. Also, people with green cards won't be affected. Neither will people who have visas issued before January 27th. The White House stopped short of calling this a ban. They call it a 90-day pause, but opponents are not convinced. The reality is this is still a, a trumped-up effort uh, to uh, pretend that the president is actually addressing security issues. Like every nation, the United States has a right to control who enters our country and to keep out those who would do us harm. White House staffers still maintain there was nothing wrong with the previous executive order. They say they changed it to try to avoid another lawsuit. The new executive order goes into effect on March 16th. Christine? All right, Taronda, thank you. Republican Senator John McCain says President Donald Trump did something no president has ever done before. Mr. Trump accused a past president of breaking the law. Now McCain is demanding Trump explain himself. The president sent tweets over the weekend claiming President Obama wiretapped his phones during the 2016 election without any proof. The White House called on Congress intelligence committees to investigate. The FBI director asked the Justice Department to dispute the claims. An Obama spokesperson denied the accusations. The Housing and Urban Development Secretary has only been in office for less than a week now, but this morning, heads are spinning over Ben Carson's recent comments about African-American history. Carson, the only African-American in President Trump's cabinet, referred to slaves as immigrants in a speech to department employees. There were other immigrants who came here in the bottom of slave ships, worked even longer, even harder for less. But they too had a dream. Uh, ben Carson later tweeted that slaves didn't just give up and die and that they made something of themselves. But that didn't stop the firestorm of criticism online. Even Chelsea Clinton sent a tweet that read, this can't be real. Others suggested Carson get demoted to a lower profile position like Secretary of Manila Envelopes. House Republicans are working to phase out what's known as Obamacare, but they are keeping some features of the plan, like coverage for people with pre-existing conditions. The bill repeals fines for people who don't buy health insurance. People would also get tax credits based on age instead of subsidies based on income. A current expansion of Medicaid to lower-income Americans would continue until 2020. The GOP proposal would eventually change how the federal government helps finance that program. 238,000 Coloradans have been covered under the expansion of Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act. A man from Boulder may spend the rest of his life in prison, but Adam Densmore knows he won't be put to death if he is convicted of murdering and dismembering the mother of his child. Boulder's district attorney announced Monday that he will not seek the death penalty against Densmore. Densmore is charged with first-degree murder for the death of Ashley Mead. Investigators say Densmore took Mead and their one-year-old daughter before he killed Mead in Colorado and then scattered her remains across several states. The couple's daughter was found safe with him in Oklahoma and is now with Child Protective Services. Hash oil likely ignited an explosion.